the Web3 wallet MetaMask is taking the first step towards building a permissionless ecosystem with the launch of Snaps. Joining us now to discuss is MetaMask co-founder Dan Finlay. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me. Hey, Dan. Thanks for being here. All right. Hey. We're talking about Snaps this morning. In a tweet thread, MetaMask said that you, quote, had an idea to build a platform that invites the developer community to build their own solutions to the hardest problems in Web3 without MetaMask's approval, end quote. Tell us how Snaps does that. Yeah, so Snaps is basically a plugin system for the wallet, and it lets you add new protocols and security providers into the wallet. And so <clears throat> it's going to make it a lot easier for the wallet to kind of keep up with the kinds of innovation and different kinds of security opportunities that are uh, getting invented every single day. You know, there are so many kinds of attacks, and then there's also so many kinds of opportunities that um, to kind of just curate the feature set of a crypto wallet is a, it's almost a disservice to how open-ended this ecosystem is. So we really see this as a, it's, it's about the user's wallet kind of stepping up to match the open-endedness of the ecosystem that it's trying to serve. Do you have a real world example of that happening? Uh, you know, can, can you, can you like cite some examples of how that would work? Okay. So, I mean, for example, a few of the snaps, Today uh, that are launching, we've got support for Bitcoin and Cosmos and Starkware and uh, Leap, <laughs> and uh, 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 we've got Tezos. Lots of blockchains that have been kind of otherwise, you know, in the past it's been like uh, you come up with a new blockchain. Now you have to basically make your own MetaMask or your own wallet, and then you have to try to, you know, you really start from zero to get up to a hundred. And what we're trying to do is really compress the amount of work it takes. For, for some new innovation in the space to reach end users. Uh, another category of snaps that we've got today is uh, transaction security providers. So something that I recommend every MetaMask user do is, you know, today go to snaps.metamask.io and check out some of the transaction security uh, snaps because we've got partnerships with nine different companies that are all doing different things from AI uh, analysis to curated phishing lists to um, provide extra insights when you perform a transaction to help you recognize whether it might be suspicious or dangerous in any known way. Um, so that's, that's another way where, you know, we do everything we can to keep users safe. We keep a phishing list. You know, we, we work with various partners to help take down sites as quickly as possible, but obviously it's not enough yet. We've got a lot of rampant scams and we kind of need all hands on deck. So this is kind of our opening the gates trying to bring in as many helpers as possible to, to keep users safer while also expanding the opportunities. Are there any checks and balances in place to ensure that the helpers that have come in, these third-party developers that are able to independently um, ship snaps, are good actors and they're not themselves implementing phishing scams or these scams that have been become synonymous with the industry via this? Yeah, so in this first release of Snaps, all of the Snaps and partners are getting individually audited, so they're particularly safe right now. They're also each getting confined very tightly within actually two layers of sandbox inside of the wallet. Um, there's one iframe and then one secure ECMAScript uh, for the techies uh, involved. Um, and uh, when you install a Snap, you get a list of very specific permissions that they'll have access to. So it may only have access to, you know, the the proposed transactions that you're considering and the network. And with that, it's not enough to uh, perform any particular, you know, it can't steal your keys or anything, but it can suggest uh, whether a given action is dangerous. Um, and then we've also got some uh, notification providers that can help like let you know if you've got outstanding allowances to a malicious contract. Um, and there's even one snap that built a chat system in it. So uh, yeah, a lot of possibilities. I know there's an interoperability piece here um, across different ecosystems. Traditionally, or I guess many times when we see interoperability, there are vulnerabilities that are introduced. We saw that with um, bridging. Are there any vulnerabilities that are introduced here with snaps allowing users to operate across different ecosystems via their MetaMask wallet? Oh, well, I, I certainly hope not. Um, you know, so these are client side wallet plugins. So they're not introducing any additional bridges. And so there aren't any, uh, any particular risks that simply, uh, you know, when you install a snap, that snap is managing that protocol's accounts for you. So, 
the worst thing that can happen is that you uh, basically enlist a snap to uh, manage your accounts and it was a bad one. But right now we're auditing all of the snaps. And um, while we uh, have plans to get fully permissionless, there's still going to be checks in place. And we're, we're exploring the protocols that we want to uh, use when we finally go uh, full, fully open. And there's still going to be multiple layers of protection to keep people safe. Um, so, so there's always going to be risk with new opportunities. Um, but I think that these current snaps, it's a, it's a set of really well-known and well-vetted uh, wallet developers and uh, uh, that are kind of now pitching in to contribute to the MetaMask experience. So back when uh, X was called Twitter, you said you'd want to dump, uh, you're thinking of dumping Apple because of uh, the potential of them knocking you out of the uh, App Store, but you're still on mm -hmm. the App Store. Does it bother you they use slave labor to build their, their <laughs> iPhones? Oh, sure, sure. I, I would love to see, sure. I would love to see the economy uh, move to a, a far, far more um, uh, labor negotiated arrangement, um, but that's a long journey. But nonetheless, I mean, they, but in all seriousness, are you willing to? Are, are, do you still want to dump uh, Apple because of their situation? I mean, you're on the App Store there. I mean, it, it, do, you, do you have a problem with them uh, still? With them potentially knocking you out of there? Well, oh, what's your relationship uh, so, with Apple so, there? Yeah, so I think the tweet that you're referring to was related to uh, they they were starting to block us from making updates in the App Store and actually other crypto companies too. And that's a serious uh, concern. And, you know, it, I think I think it, they occasionally flex it. And fortunately, right now, they're not uh, doing that. We, of course, are always building in med mitigation strategies because these, you know, we build on top of the platforms that allow us to bring our features to end users where they are today. And, you know, if these big behemoths decide to suddenly uh, try to cut uh, entire economies out, um, we have to have other plans. So... We're not we're not like moving out of Apple on principle today, but you know I think that we're aware that they seem to not have the most um, kind relationship to us, and so we have to kind of be ready and on our heels and uh, sometimes uh, when they like to play with their policy games. Well, at least you're not a five year old in Western China building the phone. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And Dan, we got to ask you about some other news that came out of MetaMask recently. MetaMask's sell feature. So now users are able to cash out Ether to fiat currency in the US, the UK, and I believe Europe. Uh, tell us about the sell feature. Oh, it sounds like your plans for MetaMask are really to cater to the more mainstream audience. Um, by implementing this and the PayPal partnership that you recently implemented. Uh, tell us about what went into the cell feature. Yeah, so uh, MetaMask cell and uh, <clears throat> and the PayPal partnership are both kinds of features of the MetaMask portfolio. So if you go to portfolio.metamask.io, we've got this kind of suite of nicely curated crypto experiences that are especially friendly to users who are maybe newer to DeFi or just want to have a trusted interface for finding the best rates on a variety of features. So the cell feature is basically us working with a bunch of partners in a bunch of different regions to help users more easily find uh, the best rates that we can uh, get for them uh, to connect and off ramp directly to their bank account or in the PayPal case uh, to put some of their US dollars into crypto. We know about the PayPal partnership. Any other big names you're working with to implement this feature on? Uh, one of the big ones for the off ramp right now is MoonPay. They're, they're definitely doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we're constantly looking for more partners, especially in more regions, because that's kind of what it takes. We need people who are specialized on, you know, on the ground floor at, at different areas. So that's really what lets uh, more people kind of access crypto. Dan, thanks very much for joining us this morning and congratulations on the launch of Snaps. Oh, thanks. That was MetaMask co-founder Dan Finlay.